I'm scrolling now again. I'm going to see if there's anything directed towards me. Shino, Chicho, what's your opinion on NAFTA, Chicho? Beneficial for the people or the elites? Beneficial for the elites. Some people, yes. Like I benefited in the 90s, I benefited from NAFTA, right? So in the 90s, when NAFTA came into effect, I had my degree as a geophysicist, right? So as a geophysicist in Canada, under NAFTA as a professional, I qualified to work in the United States and in Mexico, I believe, too, but I never worked in Mexico. But as, as a Canadian, I had the right to work in the United States as a geophysicist without needing a work visa. I could go there as long as, you know, a company requested my services there and stuff like this, right? For me, it was gone, woo -hoo, rock and roll, right? It was years later that I really understood that NAFTA was extremely de destructive to the fabric of the society in both in Canada and the United States and Mexico, right? Mexico, huge, huge, especially in regards to farming and stuff, right? There was one incident that happened when I was in Vancouver, right? And I was going to go work at a project near um, uh, Milwaukee. Okay. And it was the office in uh, is Milwaukee. It, it was um, what's the Harley Davidson? Where did they make the Harley Davidson? Um, oh, man. It's near Detroit, up Detroit. Uh, oh, I forget where they make Harley Davidson's. It was near that city right or near that town near that city right and so basically it was i was working in the vancouver office the toronto office in canada right that's the head office in collaboration with the chicago office had got this project to do pretty large geophysics project uh milwaukee it is milwaukee okay in milwaukee right near milwaukee anyway and I specialize in electromagnetic magnetic methods. I was very good at what I do. So they said, Chicho, come over. Okay. So I packed all my gear. And when I was traveling to the United States at the time, this is early, mid 90s, let's say. Uh, early 90s, mid 90s, let's say. Okay. Uh, at the time, I always went to the airport early because I got equipment to check in, uh, tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment to check in. Uh, you know, I want, I want to get a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, to, the aisle seat where's the escape hatch i haven't gone on a plane for a long time the fire exit hatch because you get more leg room i checked in early right and i knew there might be some paperwork issues so i went to the airport and checked in the uh, the equipment the computer well the computer i carried on but other computers and stuff checked everything in right extra money to pay for all the stuff went to through the border crossing right at vancouver airport so the guy called me up the the border agent he called me up and he saw that i was going to milwaukee to work as a geophysicist uh, and he turned to me and goes how come they're hiring you how come they're getting you to do this work as a canadian how come they haven't hired an american so he knew what the hell was going on i didn't and i was a young pup right i was 20 something or <laughs> young 20 right uh and I turned to him, I go, well, because I'm very good at what I do. I'm the best that I do, right? Best at what I do with a big smile on my face, cocky little face, right? And the guy looked at me and goes, oh, are you now? <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> he puts a little stamp on my car. He goes, go over there. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God, shit. I shouldn't have been cocky. Usually I was really good, but this time I was early. I was like an hour and a half early, two hours early for a flight. Whatever, right? Went to the room, right? I sat there, right? And the guy says, come on up. I go up there. I go, yeah, this, 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 this. Here's this, here's this. He goes, oh, looks like you got everything, right? Oh, but you're missing one thing. Because I had a letter from the Vancouver office saying that I was, I was going to go work in the United States, right? And the guy looks, he goes, oh, okay, uh, there's one thing you don't have. I go, what's that? He goes, you need a letter from the Chicago office, the United States, office in the United States, to go work in the United States. I go, oh, what? No, I got a letter here. It's the same company. He goes, no, this is a Canadian branch, right? You need a letter from the Chicago office. And this was, this was around 7 o'clock in the morning. 
or six o'clock in the morning. The Chicago office wasn't open yet, right? Or the people I had to deal with weren't there. So I ended up calling Toronto office, blah, blah, blah. They made me sit there an hour and a half, right? The flight attendant came because I had a shitload of equipment on the plane. The flight attendant came. They actually came to where I was sitting saying, hey, listen, uh, I'm sorry. We can't hold the plane anymore. It's got to go. Your equipment will be waiting on the other side, right? And I had asked them. I said, hey, listen, so I need I need this letter. Uh, can, give me your fax number and I'll get the office to fax you the letter. He goes, okay, sure. And he gave me a number. He gave me a number. He said, yeah, get them to fax it here. So I was on the phone calling them up, blah, blah, blah. So I'm waiting for the fax to come through from Chicago, right? But it's not coming through. And I talked to them. They go, oh, we already sent it. I'm like, okay, so I go up, go up, talk to this person, border person. The guy goes, no, it's not here. I go, well, this is the number you gave me. This is an hour and a half later. He goes, oh, they gave you the wrong number. Here's the fax number, right? So they gave me the fax number, the, the real fax number and stuff like this. Long story short, because it was a cocky 20 year old something and the border people knew that NAFTA, a lot of American working class knew that NAFTA was going to fuck over the United States because it was going to start gutting its industrial base, right? And bring in cheap labor, right? And a lot of Amer Canadians knew, a lot of Mexicans knew. I didn't know because I benefited from this, right? So plane leaves, I had to get another plane. It took me a whole, you know, 12 hours to get to Milwaukee, right? It, it became a joke. Oh, Chicho has a hard time crossing the border because he's a terrorist or whatever, right? He's born here, he's born here, he's born here. Uh, later on, I realized, nah, man, good on them for putting me through the grinder, right? Good on them. They were protecting their nation, okay? I was the cocky little I was a cocky kid, right? So benefit from a little bit crumbs from how much the elites were benefiting from NAFTA. Okay. So she know that's the long version of I if I like NAFTA. No, I don't like NAFTA, man. I don't like just because I benefited from it, it doesn't mean it's good for a society.